Hey guys, this is Eric back at you with another shake tutorial. And in this tutorial, I was asked how would somebody go about removing tracking markers. And I'm going to show you a simple, easy way to go about removing tracking markers. Because if you key this out, this is going to be completely in the way. And uh, we can roto her out if you want to. In another video, I could go through and show you how I'd go about rotoing her out. But we're going to remove these tracking markers so we can key that. And we're going to concentrate on removing this tracking marker right here. And then I'm going to show you how to remove this tracking marker. I might not go all the way through it, but I'll show you how to do it. And then um, maybe in another video we'll finish the shot up and key it and stuff like that. But in this video we're going to concentrate on removing this tracking marker via a tracker. A tracker and uh, this tracking marker via quick paint. So let's go ahead and add a tracker. Go to the transform tab. And let's append a tracker here. Let's take our tracker and put it up here. Like so. Let's zoom in and see what we got. Bring our search area in some. Like so. Let's frame back out. Now we can go through and do this by hand because it's not very many frames it wouldn't be hard so let me uh, start the track here and that stuck pretty good let's track back the other way now it's going off screen but that's okay because it's such very few frames that it's not going to be hard to fix let me zoom in up here and let's go back through here and see where we went off that's good enough. It don't have to be very accurate because we're just removing a tracking marker, but we want to get the ones where it's off big time. Like right there. It's off right there, so I'm going to go and adjust this back up. So. Okay. That looks like we got a tracker that it's not too bad. So now that we've got this rough tracker, as you can see, we just ran through it once, never even really adjusted it any. So, but that's good enough for, for what I'm doing here on YouTube. Okay, let's frame back up. Now we got this tracker. Let's go in and create a roto shape. First, my video is 720 by 480. So I'm going to go to my globals and make sure it's 720 by 480. Because I want my roto shape to be the same size. So let's go to our image tab and create a roto shape. And let's look at our original picture. And let's draw a square, a box around our tracking marker. Like so. Now, as you can see, I have this little square here. I'm going to append a molt node because I want to colorize it. Okay, I'm going to go back to my original image, select my molt node color swatch, and select a green of the green screen. Now, as you can see, my roto shape is the same color as my green screen. Now, all I have to do is add a layer node over to my tracker, lay this roto shape over top. Now, as you can see, we have that covered up. Let's add a blur to our roto shape and blur it a little. Like so, and that helps out a whole lot. So now let's go select our roto shape, right click in the center, attach tracker to shape, tracker to track one. That's mine, mine is tracker 2, as you can see. Yours will probably be tracker 1 or whatever number it is. And there. It should be attached. Now, as you see, when I move back and forth, this roto shape that I have here moves right along, covers that track up. If I go back to just the roto shape, you can see it moving because it's got that tracker attached to it. So now when we frame back out, 
our little track point is gone now let's just do a couple frames of the quick paint so I can show you how we'd go about doing that let's find a good frame here let's see where would be a good spot to paint this out I don't know, it looks like a pretty tough spot right there. Let's, let's paint right there. So let's go back up to our very top here. And, oh, I guess you could add it down here too if you wanted to. But I'm just going to do it to the original. Let's add a quick paint. Image tab. Quick paint. Now I'm going to select my clone tool. And I'm going to go in here. And clone out this little tab as you can see let's make this a little smaller bring this around like this shrink it down because we want to make sure we get a good clone here we don't want to halfway do it might as well do it right if you're gonna do it sometimes it takes a little bit of work because you're right in here so close to the hair that you just kinda gotta fiddle with it and take your time and I don't want to paint out that hair out there as you can see so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here shrink this down and go right over top of this hair here like so and as close as we can frame back out okay now we have that tracker marker removed for that frame and if we go down here both tracking markers are removed now all you have to do is just go frame by frame and paint it out frame by frame now if it's too many frames for you to do that we would just go about we could um, go about roto and her out and there's several methods we could use to roto her out and we'll go through that in a different tutorial because sometimes it's just too many frames to paint out a tracking marker but luckily with this footage it's just about a hundred frames long and it's not a problem usually for YouTube and stuff it wouldn't be a problem but for something you're getting paid for and stuff you'd want to look into rotoscoping so now we have this let's go ahead and key it out real fast with a key light Now we have this. Let's go into our original footage. I'm going to apply instead of a blur color space, instead of a color space blur color space, I'm just going to add a UV blur from Physics. This will blur out our edges. And yes, we can do this blur out the edges here by using the nodes supplied in Shake. And I have a video going off that. It's called Smooth Jag and Edgy. It's smooth, smooth and Jaggies or Smooth and Jagged Edges. I think it's in my Shapes playlist. But I'm just using this one physics plug-in UV blur just to save time. So now let's go ahead real quick and let's just find a background. I like to use an overnode, but let's pop it into the key light just for simplicity's sake. And there we go. As you can see, our tracking markers are gone, and we have a pretty good key. Now, let me jump up a frame and show you what it would look like if we hadn't removed those tracking markers. There it is. But we have. We've tracked the shape, tracked the roto shape to this tracking marker up here. And we've quick painted this one out, and we've ended up with a pretty good key. So I hope you guys have learned something, and uh, we'll see you next time.